Reporter Samara Gardner is on the ground at Tathra. Samara, how are residents holding up? Jeff, emotions are running extremely high in Bega and Tathra. In fact, at times it has been quite tense as evacuees prepare to go home. Busloads of people along with chaplains and support services were taken through the fire ravaged streets today, seeing the destruction for the first time. We can't even begin to imagine what it's like for the 69 families who have nothing to go home to. Charred remains is all that is left for them. Distraught residents take comfort in each other's arms, the crushing weight of the last two days taking its toll. One by one, residents are told of the damage to their homes, boarding buses that will take them to see for themselves. Slowly, coaches tour the streets of Tathra. Asbestos is still a concern, meaning residents are unable to leave the bus, consoling each other from within. We've been waiting for that for two days, you know, to get in, to find out and see what our future was going to be. It's just heart-wrenching because uh, floods, you know, I've seen floods and you can still get a house. Fires, you got nothing. While some homes have been saved, the gravity of what others have lost hits hard. There was people that broke down because their houses were just flattened, you know, and, and you just cried for them. The RFS is continuing to work towards opening the town in stages or zones. Desperate to get home, residents are parked at roadblocks. Last night, a 71-year-old, desperate to get home, was charged for not obeying the direction of a traffic controller. Others wait with supplies for those who didn't evacuate. My husband's there and I just want to take his asthma medication and other medication. Do you want us to take him the medication? Because we're allowed through the roadblock. Um, yeah, if you don't mind, we're yep. opposite the we fire shed. That. How are you? I've got oh, medication. Thank you. Thank you. No. Are you guys faring okay? Yeah, yeah, just a bit sad for everyone else. We're yeah. one of the lucky ones. Graham chose to stay behind with his father-in-law, George. With a heart condition and mobility issues, there was no quick way he could flee the inferno. Health-wise, it was near impossible for me to move. Because if I moved in there, I would have created a medical problem for myself and end up at hospital and there flat chat as it is. George could only wait and hope for the best as the fire circled him. So we had no power, no water and uh, just sit around and watch the helicopters go through with the water bombs. But anyway, survival, name of the game. <laughs> Those who left continue to seek food and shelter at the Bega Evacuation Centre. Opposition leader Bill Shorten, the latest to pledge his support to the tight-knit community as they look towards recovery. Gee whiz, there's been a lot of damage done and there's a lot of people carrying a whole lot of hurt. Samara Gardner, Wind News.